Now, I was, I've was i been tying a few standard humpies at the moment and uh, I mentioned in one of my videos about a CDC humpy. Now this is a CDC humpy here. This is uh, the basic tying. Uh, this is an olive, small olive. Um, the other fly I tie is the, is the canis tied in that style. Now the humpy style is easy. It's an easy way of actually tying the fly. Now, it's reasonably simple to tie, and you can tie them in different sizes. This is the size I'm tying at the moment. It's a, uh, basically, for me, the two main sizes I like tying, uh, 20s. Uh, this is the ultimate dry fly. Uh, it's a small babbler suit, size 20, and 18s are the two, one, two sizes that I, I really do well on. Now, I'm going to be tying both of these flies in the video, so I'm going to tie the canis and as well. The small done, so start off with the small done. Now, the thread I'm using uh, a yellow thread in 8 from Uni. I'm just going to wax the thread. These are the easiest flies you could tie. Now, I've just been dubbing up at the to represent the legs, and you could use small hackles, it's up to yourself. Now, what we do is we start at the eye, we come down about halfway, and then just remove the waist, and then we tie in some cock on fibers. Now, I'm looking for a nice marked feather. Now, I'm not shy when it comes to a tail, I like to put plenty of fibre on. So if we bring them 90 degrees from the stem, we can tail them away, because that will line up the tips for you. You're looking for a tail length, uh, around about at least the hook to the shank length over the back, so we put that in the final thumb. Now I tie this on the way down, it's easier to do it that way, to the back of the hook. Then come underneath these fibres and lift and separate. Just lift it, pull towards the eye and then that will lift and separate the fibres. Then we can trim away the waist. Now, looking for a couple of natural CDC feathers, they're medium to small for this size of fly. Small, uh, probably better I would think. It's finer. Now I've got two, two feathers and I'm laying one on top of the other. So what I'm doing is pulling the fibres together. Now you're looking for at least twice the or the body length. Double that. So we go, there's a, the first, that's for the wing and, and that's for the body. So then we tie this in here. So we catch this on the top nice and tight, and then we wind up. What we're going to do, with the CDC we can't really go back once we trim this away. So make sure you've got the right length, the length that you're wanting. Uh, so what we do is, just double check, that looks fine. So we trim away, carry on all the way up to the ends of the, the cut ends of the CDC. I've got wax on my thread. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let one or two fibres come back just from the side. So you lift it up and then you should end up with a couple of fibres either side or so. This will give the impression of the shock because I'm, I'm representing the, the dun coming off. That's a good way of doing it. So we catch this on the top. Just checking. That's fine. That looks okay. The length of the wing is fine. And dubbing. I'm going to use just a squirrel dub. Now, I'm going to do a dark olive. So this just gives an impression of the legs. Now, you could tie in a, a hackle here, if it's up to yourself, but I'm using the dubbing. So we build the dubbing up at the back to about the same height as the CDC. Come forward. And then we just put some dubbing in front. Now it's a rough wee fly. You don't want to be. You want to basically give the impression of the fly hatching. So and there we are. 
these are great wee patterns now what we then do is simply vanish the thread and then hit finish and then trim away the thread and there we are now trim away the odd long fibre Just come in there, just so we can get the body a wee bit, just a wee bit, don't overdo it. Now you can see how the tail, there's some CDC fibres within the tail. As I say, that gives impression of the shuck as well, so it is a, that's why it works so well. Uh, and it being rough, times are rougher the better. So anyway, that's a small done, small olive. Now we're ready to tie the canis. Uh, first thing we do is change, obviously, our thread to, to white, an 8 This is a uni thing you do is run the wax through. They're really quick these flies, you can fill your box uh, in no time. Uh, it's an easy style. So what we do is we start at the eye, come halfway down and then remove the waste. Now I'm going to tie in some more of the Cop de Leon fibres on the way down. So again if we bring them 90 degrees from the stem that will line the tips up for you. I like a few fibres so don't be shy with it. So we get the length we want, so we're looking at the length of the hook to come over the back, put that on your finger and thumb. Tie this down and away to the back of the hook. So we get to this point, if you want to separate the fibres we can come underneath with a turn and pull towards the eye and that will lift and slightly separate the fibres. A wee quick look. That's fine. So we trim that away. Now for the wing in the back or the hump, I'm using the white CDC, so I've got two small feathers. Just line them up again. You're looking twice the shank, so there's one. There's two, so we hold that, tie these on the top. Three turns now, just checking the length. That looks a bit fine. So we come up, trim away the waist. Just going to tidy up these ends, make sure you've got wax on your thread. So we can bring the CDC over. And again, I'm going to let one or two of the CDC fibres fall away, fall back. Just to give impression of the shock. Again, do a pinch and loop. A couple of turns. If it slightly rolls away from you, you can always say bring it back. Position the wing the way you want. Another couple of turns. Now we're ready for our, our dubbing. Now I'm just using the squirrel dub again. Just the black squirrel dub. Now you could use a hackle as I say before, you could use whatever you like. Just put a tiny bit of dubbing onto the, the thread. Just basically tighten up when you need to, form the legs. Some at the back, get the thread to the front, put some dubbing at the front. Then any fibre going forward, stroke it back. See how things are sitting. Now, this will represent mainly the, them coming off, so that's why I like to have one or two fibres laying back. Reasonably rough, we can tidy up a wee bit yet. We can tidy some of the dubbing, but what we're going to do here is put some varnish on the thread first. And hit finish. Three, four turns. Tighten up. And then trim away. And basically that's your canis. Now what we do is just take away the excess feather, the fibres, sorry, the long. Just pull them out. That's it, ideal. And there you go, and that's the wee humpy CDC uh, canis. Obviously we've got the olive. Uh, again, it's, much, it's just the same pattern, same size. Great patterns to have in the river. Uh, change the colours. 
you can have light, dark, you can even this one here's got a wee bit of UV on it. Uh, just different versions. Uh, you can even, if you want, you can tie it spent. Uh, I've got I should have a couple of spent. Uh, uh, here's one tied with the Antron instead of the CDC, just to give you an idea. This represents a small trico light pattern that I use. Uh, and it's, it's Antron over the back, I've darkened it down, you can keep it white though, I've got the white ones as well. I just use a Pantone paint to darken it down. These are good B-Midge patterns as well. Anyway, it's, they're good fun to tie and you can fill your box really quick. So, that's uh, the CDC, uh, the, the Canis version of the Humpy. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe and thank you for watching.